Hey, hey, what up, y'all? Justin Gay, Seeds of Zanzadu, tomatoes. So for the most part, guys, this is gonna be just about tomatoes. A lot of just different things about tomatoes when I'm finding anything from trellising the tomatoes to uh, the way that we have to harvest our tomatoes now. Things that I would do differently with my Lauren Lean system or things that I plan to do differently with my Lauren Lean system next season. How to Lauren Lean. Yeah, it's gonna be a bunch of different things going on right now. Here we go. We've actually already lowered and leaned these uh, these crops of tomatoes, just about all of them have already been lowered and lean. My first row of tomatoes is a Super Sweet 100, which is pretty much a cherry tomato. These guys have grown fast, really, really fast. The one problem that we did have, or that I am finding with these, uh, this variety of tomato, is that for whatever reason, the tomatoes were fruiting like crazy, but at the same time, they're not ripening fast enough, basically, we're getting up to the top of the um, to the top of the trellis, and then we have to lower it. When we lower it, all the the tomatoes, the fruit, and a lot of them are now going into the dirt, not ripened. So there's a little bit of a problem there, right? Because we don't want our fruit in the um, in the soil so much. So what I've had to do is actually come out here, harvest a lot of these things while they're still green, and let them ripen inside of my house. A tomato needs three things in order to turn red: lidocaine and carotene. Those two are what is inside of the tomato that makes it turn red. Uh, the next one, it's emitted from the tomato, which is ethylene. Ethylene is a gas that helps your tomatoes turn red. Here in Fontana, we get breezes that come by a little bit often. So I'm almost wondering if because of those breezes that keep coming by, that it's blowing away the ethylene off of my crop. So I'm not ripening as fast as I probably should. Anyway, like I said, we've been taking them inside. Uh, if you're finding that you're having a problem right, ripening, your or ripening your tomatoes, yeah, put them inside, because those gases will emit even when they're not on the plant anymore. So you can actually get them to turn for you inside. Another trick I've kind of been playing around with when it comes to uh, getting my tomatoes a little bit more ripe is by turning off the water. I'm not watering them as much although today we are doing composting, but I'm not watering them as much as what we were. I've now cut down their water from every day. We're right about three to four times a week now in, in hopes to try to get these guys to ripen up a little bit faster. Basically, when you're lowering and leaning, here, let me find a really good one. Actually, check this out. This tomato right here actually started way over here. Wow, so that tomato starts way over there, right? So basically what we do is we lower it down. Let me see, I think there's one that I can actually do. Yeah, here's one over here. I can show you. Actually, I'll show you this one over here. Nothing really needs to be lower and lean right now. Oh, here we go, here's one. We lower and leaned a lot of these things yesterday, so. A lot of them don't need to be done, but check it. This is what we're doing. We're lowering lean. This tomato has made it to the top of the trellis. This is just one I forgot to lower and lean yesterday. <laughs> so I can show you guys. So anyway, what I'll do is open up my bell, lower it down. I'll go right about two times. If they're, so, if they're pretty long, I'll go three times. And we'll do something like that. Then we we'll take the rest of the trellis. and I just trellis it around. There you go. Um, at this time right now, I just lowered that one. I didn't really lean it. If I wanted to lean it, I would do something more like that. But I don't really need to, at this point, lean that guy, seeing that it's kind of, uh, we're kind of cool as it is. So I just dropped that guy. But anyway, that's the power of lower and lean. So now I can actually have a, uh, a tomato plant that would otherwise go as tall as it possibly could and I can keep it at a at a height that um, is easy for me to work with um, as well as I don't have a super tall structure so I can keep on uh, letting my tomatoes grow and uh, getting fruit all season long now here's the problem with it so remember as I just dropped it see these fruit down here these guys are not ripe so what I have to do now. Some of these smaller ones down here, I'm not really too concerned with anyway. So what I do is I pretty much just snip these guys off. And that's pretty much what I've been doing to keep most of the tomatoes off the ground. As you can see, there's still some of them that have hit the ground. The ones that are pretty much, um, that are not 
that are not ripening fast, I have let a couple of those guys go ahead and just touch the ground. Um, and then we'll see where they're at like next week and we'll harvest them up. I've already harvested a buttload of these things and are allowing them to turn red in the, uh, in the house. It's working. It's not exactly the way I wanted to go about it, but nevertheless, like I said, it is working. So, it, it, you know, that's the way we're gonna go right now. I do have a feeling, however, the next couple harvest, we may not need to do that as much. One of my biggest complaints about this whole system, and it's really not the system as much as the way that I went about building this system, um, is these, these wired, uh, the wire that I used. Um, probably should have went with the cable first of all. Uh, I think that probably would have been better off. Um, but I don't even think I want to even deal with cables next year. Um, went to this place called the Growing Experience out in Long Beach, California, and I seen a really cool trellising structure that they had built. Thing about that is that it is a permanent structure. I don't really know if I want to go permanent yet, even though I do um, own this house. I don't know that I want to go permanent in a structure like that, like cementing poles in the ground and whatnot. It's got windy. Buddy Josh Satin over at Satin Farm is another fellow YouTuber. Built a really cool trellising system. He's not lowering and leaning, but nevertheless, he had to build a really cool uh, trellising system made out of T-post, a little bit of PVC, and then electrical conduit. I think that's probably the way I'm gonna go about it next year. Just because the sag, it really makes it to where that whole problem I was showing you earlier with the lowering and leaning, it makes it to where that happens even faster now because the tomato plants aren't able to grow as high as I wanted to, as high as I measured them out to when I first built this system. So that's kind of a bummer. One thing about that is that this side is the uh, side that holds most of our cherry tomatoes. While these plants right here have more of a mid-body tomato or larger tomatoes, and then the one way over there at the end, that one's kind of just like a, a hodgepodge of both. Bigger body tomatoes, what's cool about them is that they're actually fruiting a lot lower to the ground, not getting up as tall on the trellis yet. So it's pretty easy for me to keep their fruit off the ground, right? Because they're actually growing off the ground. It's not been a problem. I haven't had to lower and lean them. They're working out really well. Um, and those happen to be on these two trellises here. So even though these trellises are sagging a little bit more than I want them to, it hasn't yet become that big of a problem. And I figure by the end, oh, what's going on there? oh man, found some nasty stuff. Hold on. Just looked over my shoulder and I seen a couple plants like that. These fruit like that, that's blossom in rot. Um, Normally this happens when, uh, when your plant's not taking up the calcium that it needs. So it's only happened over there on one plant. There's other reasons such as heat, Lord knows it gets pretty hot here, and in sporadic watering. Like I said, we have changed it up a little bit. Yeah, we're seeing that. Again, only on one plant. Hold this guy, let it ripen up in the house. There, I haven't really seen too much of this happen. This is the first time, especially with the bigger body tomatoes that I've seen, hap uh, happen, that I've seen this happen this season. And thank God it's only on one plant so far. Everything else is looking really good. Um, but we'll deal with that. Anyway, seeing that I had to harvest this guy. This is normally what I'm looking for when I do have to harvest a tomato when it's still green. This top part right here, this is what they call the shoulders. Now, if that is dark green up there, normally you want to leave that. Right, you want to leave that until it becomes the same color all the way around and it's lighter. Um, normally, if it's still green up on top, it's going to take your tomato a lot longer to actually ripen inside the house. Once it's actually already turned like this, you know that the tomato is actually already on. It's already on the turn. It's already getting ready to actually uh, to uh, change color for you. I mean, if you look hard enough, you can actually see it's kind of blushing there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll go ahead and hold this guy off. What I was saying before I got distracted, um, what's gonna end up happening with those guys, the way they're turning out is by the time they get to the end of their growth cycle, they probably will just be at the top of that trail. They're actually coming close to the middle of July. Um, I don't expect to be growing, especially bigger sized tomatoes, too much more um, after August, to be honest with you. We'll be lucky to actually get these things into the middle of August, still fruiting with the type of temperatures that we get here. Since added this little uh, cable here, which is um, actually pulling the trellis back, is really, really working. So those wire cables, even though I think I will be building something different next year, 
they actually aren't nearly as bad as what I uh, as what I thought. They just needed this little cable right here. Pretty good. This is the way that uh, the direction that we are actually running the carousel for our lowering lane system. So all the plants growing on the left hand side of the row all go this way. See how all these guys all go in this one direction. This uh, tomato plant right here is gonna cross over to this side. Probably can actually do that now. I'm gonna try to dance in between this tomato plant and that tomato plant right there. Seeing that they're too small, I planted those guys in after I have planted this one, of course. Yeah. There you go. So now what that does, frees up space for this guy. So that's pretty much how it goes, right? So then of course, seeing that those guys are going this direction, everything on the right hand side now is going back down. Right? And then this guy right here, that used to start right in this area here, is now crossed. Pretty much lower and lean. Got way too hot, man. The pest that we've been getting out here, I've been seeing a little bit of aphid pressure, not anything that I really need to write home about. It hasn't been going too crazy. Um, we have killed some um, tomato hornworms. Uh, the thing about tomato hornworms, one quick trick, if it's really not a trick, but just something to be aware of, normally I find them in two. So basically, if you find one, you're gonna find two. If you find three, you're gonna find four. So far, I've found about four. I I'm kind of wondering if the birds have been helping out a little bit as well. Um, I see a lot of birds perching up here. Um, so maybe they're helping me out with that because I'm not seeing a lot. I'm not seeing too, too much tomato hornworm pressure. I thought I was gonna be seeing a lot more seeing that I see a lot of sphinx moths flying around here. Um, and I've been seeing them flying around here now way before the season even began. So I just knew that we're gonna get um, inundated with uh, hornworms, but we haven't. This is how I know that I have hornworm damage. See how these things are bitten off? Right here, these part of the branch and stem are bitten off. And then you see all that leaf that's just been pretty much, it just stops. Well, it's because that leaf's been eight. Same thing down here. Another telltale sign is when you look down, you can normally see some of their scat. That's normally the easiest way to actually find them. You find their poop, look up. Generally, they're right on top of that. Not all the time. A lot of times, that's how I find them. It's pretty much gonna do it for me, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna keep up with what it is that I'm doing, you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm Justin Gay. This is Cesar Zanzadio. Peace.